Well, YouTube, it's about time I posted another video. So this is part one of something I've been planning for a long time now. Um, it's time to put some tunes in my ride. But I am not a conventional type guy. I can't see spending $1,500 on something that's so-so. I can't see buying the factory stuff that I hear sounds kind of crappy i've always bought high-end speakers and figured out um amp wise what will work and uh and and usually bought unconventional speakers for my boats in the past and my rides in the past so let's take a look and see what it looks like to build a stereo for the krx 1000 on the cheap all right let's get started so the one thing I do not sacrifice is my speakers. I am a firm believer in Polk uh, MM series speakers. Those are marine based speakers. Love them. So the six and a half inches are going to go in the doors. Uh, those are new. I'm a little worried about depth. So all you need to do is buy half inch rings um, for these. Uh, to accommodate any depth issues. It may work, it may not, but with the half inch rings I know it will work. So those are my speakers for the doors, but here's the unconventional. So in my Maverick uh, X3 I put Polk outdoor speakers in. Love them, they sound awesome you can rotate them, you can mount them any way you like. I've got mine tucked up in the corners where you can barely see them. And let me tell you, the sound that these Polk outdoor speakers put out are phenomenal. I have Polk Atrium 4s in my uh, X3 along with the subwoofer and they sound great. Now I'm going to switch here. Um, now better yet, I'm going to keep on going and I'm going to show you how I'm going to mount those Polks unusually. So what am I going to use for a source unit? So I have really, <laughs> I have really looked around. I have two or three old source units around here. I've got um, MB Quartz. I've got uh, JVCs. I've got JBLs. I, I must have six of them around here. But look what I found I really like. Um, there's a guy out there on the internet tests a lot of these inexpensive amps and equalizers and what have you. I've been watching a lot of different tests of these things. So this is a cool unit. This is a seven band graphic equalizer from Rockville. You can get it for, I, I, if I recall, I think I paid less than a hundred bucks for it. Um, it has a mic out if you want. It has a um, subwoofer separate out. It has seven band. It has um, high input ends. It has um, front and rear. So now you've got control differently your front and rear. And it has a sub out control. So, and here's the kicker this is Bluetooth. I don't need a head unit. This will work. And it's a pretty decent quality unit. Um, I've tried it. It sounds really good. So this is going to be my Bluetooth head unit. I don't use satellite. I don't. Know, I just use my phone, and I always like my tunes. So here's something different. Now, first thing you look up on the internet and go, ah, oh, that's not waterproof, dude. You're right. But let's show you where I'm going to mount this thing. And it works out perfectly. Take a look here. This box, because it has the big lip all the way around it, stays perfectly um, waterproof. And there she goes. Now I'm going to have to do some modification on the back side of the box because that's a pretty tight fit and I still have to put um, my, my uh, RCA cables in there. But take a look at that. That's going to mount in there perfectly, and yes, it's not a waterproof marine. But as long as I keep that thing dry and high, and I'm not a big water guy or a mudder. I am a technical rider. And so that should work out pretty good, and that way I can just flip it up and tune it when I need to. So let's go back and let's talk about what amp am I going to use for the four speakers. Now here's a new one too. Check a look at this. This is a Rockville Marine amp. This is a four-channel amp. 
in uh, 4 ohm it's going to give you about I think it's 60 watts per channel 100 watts on 2 ohms uh, in here and check it out even got a PA mic so you can talk to people decent lamp I've watched videos on how they've tested these Rockvilles it is small it's going to mount behind the seat pretty easily and I shouldn't have any problems with it and a uh, lot of tuning on it okay so there's that amp now I can't I can't go away without any subwoofer but the challenge in these units is to put a subwoofer in that's going to work in there so here's my subwoofers I have two of them these are six and a half inch subs that are inexpensive they're like 69 bucks a piece these are six and a half inch boxes so here's what i'm going to do i am porting them i'm going to put two ports in now you're saying uh oh that's water coming in i'm going to be inserting a tube that goes up inside i'm going inside there i'm going to seal it and i'm going to drop that tube down to about I don't know, three or four inches down. That's going to port out on both sides of that. That's going to allow this to port. Uh, this is a pretty solid subwoofer. Um, again, these are not waterproof, but I'm going to put the seals in with silicone, and these are not going to get destroyed. This is rubber, and this is high-end plastic, so this should work fine. These boxes are inexpensive. I think they were 49 bucks or 45 bucks for two of them. They're small, and I'm having to port them to get some more sound out of them, but um, that seems to work. So what am I going to drive them with? Right here. Again, did a lot of research on these mini amps out there right now. You don't have to spend a fortune to get a quality amp these days. Um, these Toros, these Rockvilles, uh, when you watch the videos on them testing these units you're going to be pleasantly surprised at the kind of power they put out and the kind of quality that you're getting because they're using the latest circuitry whereas some of the older amps out there are still using the old circuits that ha get hotter um, w will not produce as much sound this little booger here is a two channel Toro I'm going to tr I've got two of these these are not marine grade I'm putting these in my glove box uh, I own, I may, I'm going to work with one to see how it sounds, or I will bridge it if I need more, and I have a second one. These, again, are inexpensive for, I think, 79 89 bucks a piece. I'll post all these products and all these prices on these things, but these subs should mount, let me go grab a box that's not heavy with one hand. These boxes, I should be able to mount these behind the seats in here it's hard to tell with my phone but this is small enough where i can mount it on the wall behind the seats and still get some base out of this thing um, it's only about four and a half inches and we've got plenty of room behind the seats i'll either mount both of them one above each other over here on this side or i may be mounting one on the other side depending on when i get these seats out and what i have to work with so that's the beginning of what I'm doing. Unconventional, except for these poke uh, momos. Um, but start looking at some of these amps that are inexpensive from Rockville. You can get these on Amazon. You go to rockvilleaudio.com uh, and you can buy direct. You won't see much on there right now because they are sold out of a lot, but when you click over to the left, notice that it says in stock or out of stock. You may not see any listings, but go to the uh, out of stock uh, and click on that and you'll see all the amps and things that you can purchase from these guys and again go research these and watch these guys that do serious tests these are guys that have the equipment to test these amps and how much they'll push and test these speakers these scar speakers have been tested they're they're good so that's the start um, got my first door panel out uh, started to draw in and I'm gonna quit for this evening and start to work on it a few nights this week I will keep you posted oh I almost forgot how am I gonna mount these poke speakers I want to mount them exactly how you see them um, in the back and they will rotate and tilt as you can see here okay and you can um, crank them to any 
level you want and tighten them up and they aren't going anywhere my other ones have not failed me in three years okay so let's show you what I'm about to do with that so I purchased one inch steel square tube from Home Depot I bought one inch caps on the internet from uh, Amazon I am painting this right now once I get my speakers aligned and mounted I'll cut it to length and cap it off I'm going to decide exactly where along this I need to place this to still get good sound to my to my head and and still maybe keep some rear view on this and from the you know the good news is is that I can mount these fairly low down in here because um, as long as I can get this out and get my maintenance I'm in good shape now how I'm gonna mount it is I am going to use my good old if you look back a I don't know a few videos ago I talked about repairs and things I'm gonna use my nut cert tool so I am going to find my positions, I'm going to drill my holes, I'm going to put a nut cert in with an, um, an 8 uh, millimeter nut cert, and I'm going to drill my holes in here, and I'm going to mount that and uh, use some Loctite, and that way that's a removable bar. Now you can go to a 1 inch, or you can go to a 1 and a quarter at Home Depot. I went to the one inch at this point. It's sturdy. It's solid. You can even go up to one and a quarter. I'm just trying to keep the visibility as best I can in here. So visually I think this is going to look out okay. Even though it's not round like these, it's going to be a mountable surface that um, that is sturdy, won't go anywhere, and uh, as long as I mount it properly with nut certs, instead of drilling all the way through, if you just put a nut cert here and bolt in through the nuts, uh, you're in better shape. Anyway, so uh, that's what's happening. Uh, stay tuned for more action and more, uh, and I'm sure I'm going to run into problems. I always do, and uh, I have some backup items in case certain things don't work. But uh, this is the game plan, folks. I uh, look forward to showing you all a couple of things that I did along the way. Like, for instance, I just cut out the box that the speakers were in close to it. Put the ring in there. Kind of got it centered. Drew, drew in it. And boom. Now I have a perfect center to cut out. Okay? Little tricks like that that are already in the box with the speakers. Um, again, have a great week. Look forward to showing you the end result and letting you listen to the end product. See ya.